Hello, I'm FGX Toy Cat, and this statement should come to no surprise to anyone who watches my channel, but Minecraft seeds are pretty darn important. In fact, to prove that point, I loaded up 10 random seeds just before this video that I'm going to show you right now, just to prove how different a random Minecraft seed can be from one to another. In fact, it can change your entire gameplay experience, especially in the first few hours, right? Because all of these seeds would give you hugely different Minecraft game experiences, so clearly the lesson to be learned is pick the right Minecraft seed. However, honestly, a lot of people take that as slightly the wrong way and admittedly for most players it doesn't really matter if you pick a Minecraft seed based on you know whether you like the trees near spawn or whether it has a village you like or any other sort of factor like that but the truth is a Minecraft seed shouldn't be picked based on these things because everything in the Minecraft world is changeable by you right anything you want to change you can you might look at this seed and say wow that's a perfectly flat land but you can flatten land in any Minecraft biome you might look at this seed and say wow it's got an abandoned zombie village what a rare unique feature but the truth is you can find cobwebs anywhere you can make your own villages and you can abandon them if you want to. You can make this yourself if you really want to. It's just easier if the game chooses to do it. And of course, we all know that. But why does that play into our decision making when picking a seed? <laughs> But why should you care about that when you're making the decision on a brand new seed? And the answer why is because 99% of a Minecraft world is shiftable by you. That's in fact the entire point of Minecraft. However, there remains a tiny, tiny fraction of things that you can't change about your Minecraft world. When you first load up a Minecraft world, there are certain things that are decided based on your seed that can never be changed no matter how long you play in your Minecraft world. If you have a world you intend to last for a year or for five years or for 10 or for a lifetime, there are things no matter how much work you do in that that lifetime, you'll never be able to change about the game. And although zombie villagers might seem cool, or having some free baby sheep with your village might seem cool, these are not some of those factors. These are things you can change yourself very quickly afterwards, but there are some things that will not ever change the Minecraft world, and I wanted to run down what those are today, because again, we cover so much seed stuff on the channel, it should be worth noting what things you can never change and are decided by your seed once and then never ever again, so let's dive straight into it. So the first thing you can never change about a Minecraft world is actually fairly obvious when you think about it, but it is, of course, the biomes. And a lot of people might hear that and then say, well, oh, you can't change the biomes. Of course, if you want to get a bunch of mycelium near spawn, you need to have a mushroom biome, one of the rarest biomes in the game. By the way, what a great seed, right? But like, uh, you need to have a mushroom biome if you want to get some mycelium, but that's not entirely true. Even though you find mycelium in mushroom biomes, it's a lot easier for you uh, to find those things here. Same with the mushrooms themselves. You can take mushrooms and myceliums out of a, you know, mushroom biome, but you can never change the underlying biome structure itself. This biome right here will never spawn hostile mobs in it and although the mushroom biome is a bit of a weird exception so we'll leave it to the side for now the other biomes all have certain factors at play as well which will always be stuck that way no matter what you terraform about the biome even if you remove every single spruce tree in a tiger biome it will still be a tiger biome underneath which means it'll always have this color green grass and more importantly than that the temperature of the biome, which determines certain things with regards to the weather, um, will of course never change either. So to give a good example of this, anywhere above about 100 blocks up in a tiger biome, even a uh, you know warm tiger biome, uh, will have snow spawn here, which means if we have a giant build, which is at this height, you'll see how all of it, which is in a tiger biome where snow falls, is going to slowly be affected by snow, which can affect your things in a positive way if you like things feeling Christmassy. Um, but also if you like the fact that your builds won't get covered in snow, you have to erase every single time that it snows, then it's best to place them in a plains biome, for instance. And if you want to have, uh, you know, something be, uh, you know, near your spawn, if you want to have something, you know, be in a certain area with a certain biome, that's a thing you're going to need to have. Because, by the way, you can see just how fast this is getting covered. For a good example as to how bad snow can be, if you don't want this. Um, but then you might say, well, uh, you know, why don't we just move the build, you know, the same gold block platform that for some reason you really want to build in survival. Why not just move it to a different biome? And the second point is why you can't do that, although to do a biome, it's also worth mentioning that you can find uh, different mobs in different biomes always. So you'll find more wolves in the tiger biome. You'll find more of the edible mobs in a uh, <laughs> in a plains biome. You know, I'm gonna totally start calling certain animals edible from now on. Because of course, pigs are edible, sheep are edible. You look over here at the cats and you can say they're not. And then you can look at the villagers over here and say, you know, kind of the in-between category, right? So the second thing you can never change about your Minecraft world is to do with death, because as we all know, when you die, you respawn at your respawn point, unless you don't have one, in which case you go to your world spawn. And as you can see, my world spawn is quite far away from the plains biome where I wanted to settle down, or the spruce biome next to that, and not that far away from the mushroom biome, but still a little bit of a walk away, right? So as a result, if I die and I don't have a bed, I have to walk back there. But you might hear this and say, well, I mean, you can make beds though, Toy Cat, right? I mean, like when you make a bed, it changes 
changes your respawn point, so really you can change the spawn point of your world, but no, you're changing your personal spawn point for as long as your bed remains unaffected. And although in most single player worlds, most of the time, this isn't a real issue, it's worth mentioning, if you ever want to have anyone else join your world on any frequency whatsoever, it's a common courtesy and also just makes you look better if your spawn is somewhat near your stuff. So when someone joins the world for the very first time, they're going to have to traverse this ravine right here, which is going to be a whole thing. They're going to have to work out where my stuff is, and it's a little bit of an inconvenience to them, but also it just kind of makes everything look a bit worse, right? Uh, when you join a Minecraft world, you shouldn't expect to go on a long walk, and if it's thousands of blocks you need to travel before you find your nearest mushroom biome, you can see how if you just found a seed which had the things you wanted to build on, the things you wanted to have next to your spawn, that would affect your guest experience much better. Also, if by any chance your bed is destroyed without you realizing, which, you know, can happen from time to time, uh, having to travel thousands of blocks to get your stuff back is a very much nerve-wracking experience. No one wants to have to deal with all of that because of the huge risk. You know, I know personally I've gone through a thing. I might have lost my stuff about 700,000 blocks away from spawn. <laughs> You know what I desire. I get heartbreak, just, just saying it, man. But yeah, although there are lots of things you can move close to your spawn, the biomes are something you can't move, and if you need your builds to be based around the biome, for whatever reason, or even if you just want to settle somewhere, you know, slightly different to start with, it can be a real hassle to destroy your entire uh, livelihood. Maybe sometimes that includes a village, if you settle down one of those farms, and then to move it near spawn, and also, it's a hassle for someone who comes into your world to have to walk all the way over to where your stuff is, and in this case, I'd have to climb a staircase to get that gold platform. Who wants to do that? I don't want to do that, which is why we're going to move into the third thing uh, that you can never change about a world. So another thing you can never change about your world, no matter how much you want to try it, without using cheats at least, um, is going to be the placement of the bedrock. Because as we all know, you can move around any block in Minecraft, even obsidian if you really want to, which is going to come in handy in a second. But the only block that you can't properly move around in survival is going to, of course, be the bedrock. So if I really want to, I can reorganize every single other block around here. I can even take the diamonds myself if I really want to. In this case, they've wedged right next to bedrock, which is wacky, right? But you can take any of these things for yourself if you really want to, but you can't alter the bedrock. As we've proven a million times before, although we can do it again right now, bedrock is not mineable in Minecraft. Who would have figured? There is one block in this uh, game which you cannot change, and that is bedrock. And you might say, but what does this have to do with the seed? Well, every seed will have a very slightly different bedrock pattern because it's based on the pearly noise generator which uh, you know guides the rest of the game and although this isn't so important in the overworld because what are you really doing in here that's so important although you might get trapped in a hole eventually but you know you can look at this and say eh, it's not really that important to me but that is until that is until you go to the end of course because the end has its own spawn point first of all which in this case sucks you'd have to spend some time working on that. And even then, you're further away from the portal than you'd prefer to be, I imagine. Um, but also, the uh, the nether at the end actually, well, the nether actually comes with its own uh, bedrock as well. But you'll notice how the end also has its own uh, share of these bedrock blocks as well. That's right, there is bedrock in the end, and the bedrock is floating in weird places. Again, in every single tower, it's slightly different. It's a whole big mess. And if you've seen my Let's Play world, which I'll show you right now, um, because I had two sets of pillars spawned from two sets of respawn generations. Don't ask why or how. It means the bedrock there has never moved. Interestingly enough, also, it's not just the bedrock on top of these towers. It's also the bedrock portals in the middle. Again, it's made from bedrock. It's unmovable. If it's close to your spawn point, that's great. If it's not close to your spawn point, that can be a real hassle. If, like me, again, you know, I'm doing a lot of end projects, so I'm going to reference myself. You know what? It's my Minecraft video. I'll talk about my projects. So, um, yeah, there's a lot of things going on at the end. And getting them all close together, whether that be the Endman farm, whether that be the, the dragon thing, whether that be the glass covered thing, making the end more efficient is really important and you can't make it more efficient because your way in you know where you spawn in the end and your way out are fixed so having them be literally 10 blocks closer can save you 10 meters of travel every single time you enter the end which might be hundreds thousands or tens of thousands of time so yeah would you like to save yourself at least four seconds every end cycle which can equate to 40,000 seconds eventually um, pick a seed with a good distance between the spawn and the portal also let me know if you'd like to see a seed where those things are as close as they can be. I know there is a minimum distance, but I'd like to find the closest within that, potentially. So let me know if you'd like to see that as well. And if you wouldn't like to see that, how about we dive into the final thing which can change between Minecraft worlds? 
And it's funny, actually, because it relates to the dragon being dead, as she now is. I definitely killed her legitimately, didn't use commands to do so. But when you kill the ender dragon, she drops one of these dragon eggs, right? And that's really interesting because it's an example of a non-renewable resource. So this is a really weird example because when it comes to non-renewable resources, they should be the least important thing in your Minecraft world. Because Minecraft worlds on Java are 30 million by 30 million. Uh, so you can, I'll show you the number of blocks that means on screen right now. And uh, M Minecraft worlds on bedrock are 12 million by 12 million, roughly. It goes on infinitely beyond that, but to keep things simple, they're 12 million by 12 million, meaning that this number of blocks exist in both those versions, and you can realistically find even the rarest blocks in abundance. However, certain seeds will have more of certain rare blocks, and eventually you will run out of these blocks again. Eventually. Um, but yeah, certain seeds will have more examples of things like, not the Ender Dragon Egg, that's only one per world, but if we hop through the portal and we defeat the game like we clearly did legitimately, some Minecraft resources can't be produced infinitely through farming or through other methods, but instead can only be found naturally in the world. So, for instance, although wood seems like it's rare because you need trees each time, you can replant trees every single time. Uh, for instance, although stone seems kind of rare, you can get cobblestone and you can smelt it to make stone in the real world, and you can get cobblestone with cobblestone generators. Pretty much every resource in Minecraft is renewable, which is really wonderful in that one way. However, there are some resources that aren't, and most of these are because who wants them to be? Like for instance, gravel. Gravel is something you can mine in your world, but you can never find again once you've mined it. Eventually, if you played enough Minecraft and built enough builds and enough concrete powder and enough stuff like that, you would run out of gravel. Again, functionally, no one has and no one ever will. But to give an example of something you might care about a little bit more, mob spawners can only be found in the places they exist in the Minecraft world. They can't be altered, they can't be changed. They are found and then they are lost and that is literally it. And also, sometimes you get attacked while you're looking for them. And yeah, although mob spawners might seem like a real pain the first time you run across them, the truth is these things, they can be mined or they can be kept. You can't reproduce them in any way. And this is really interesting because it also applies to the stronghold where if you don't already know, you can sometimes find uh, you know, stronghold blocks which actually are not stronghold blocks, they are instead, uh, they're called monster eggs, they're called uh, silverfish uh, eggs because they are blocks which actually have silverfish inside them. They're only found inside the floor as best I know and the only real way to know if you've got one is if you punch it and it starts to break really easily. But yeah, these things seem like a nasty surprise when you're just mining around your stronghold, but then every now and then a silverfish pops out, right? Like this block right here, you can see, takes the same amount of time to mine with a pickaxe and with a shovel, so we'll know that it's a monster egg. However, there's no way to make a monster egg. You can put silverfish inside a block in some weird ways, sort of, technically. Um, but yeah, so monster blocks are something that are only found inside, well, in stone and in extreme hills, but then only found inside these strongholds in these stone brick forms. You'll never be able to get any more of these. And therefore, if you want to get the seed with the most monster eggs, for whatever reason, you'd need a seed with a lot more strongholds. Realistically speaking, this isn't something you can consider because you don't know how many exact number of strongholds there are, and if you do, you can't move them around, so it's not useful for most players, but it changes based on your seed. If for some reason, monster eggs become collectible in a future update and they become really useful for a reason, some seeds will have millions and some seeds will have hundreds of thousands and so on and so forth. There is a disparity between seeds of how many of these blocks you have, and that is really interesting. Along the same line, something I think about a lot is how there are only so many ores in your Minecraft world, eventually you can mine them all, especially with coal, which is such a usable resource for instance, especially with iron and gold and diamonds, there are only so many of these that exist in your Minecraft world, and the number is so much higher than anyone can go through in a lifetime. We've, we spent a lot of Minecraft videos devoted to that, um, oh, again, you'll see a clip from one on screen right now, hopefully. Hello, I'm IBX Toyka, and one of the things that's always interested me the most in Minecraft, whether it be on the PC or the console, is the actual mining part. We move on to coal, and the number of coal all you'll find alone in a world is 415,000. So, absolutely crazy right there. Finally, we have the coal. How many coal blocks could you take and mine in a world? And the answer to this one is 14,602,240. But yeah, technically speaking, the amount of these blocks, the amount of gravel, the amount of monster eggs, the amount of monster spawners, um, even the amount of lava blocks uh, you have is limited to how many you have when you first get into a world. And this interestingly means, because there's lots of weird byproducts of this, uh, and one of the favorite ones to me is the fact that soul sand is non-renewable. When you go to the nether for the first time, the amount of soul sand you have is the amount of soul sand that you have. 
And this means that because the Wither requires a full Soul Sand purchase, uh, and although you're never going to fight the Wither, you know, a million times, if you did fight the Wither enough times, eventually you would use up all of the Soul Sand in your world, meaning that beacons are technically also a non-renewable resource because you can only have as many beacons as you have Wither bosses to fight, which means, yeah, you can never have a trillion beacons. Not, I mean, realistically, again, the limit is something else, but it's a fun thing to think about. And really, that's what today's video was. Most of this doesn't need to affect you in a huge way. The renewable resource thing sounds huge, but it really isn't. It really shouldn't affect your decisions in any real way. But what really should affect your decisions is the biomes around your spawn, how much you intend to use them for long-term uses. You know, the start of your world, the closeness to trees, that's nice, that's a bonus. Uh, having a village, having free chests, those things are wonderful, and I'll show them off on this channel because people like to see them, and I, I'm nothing if not a people pleaser. But I think there are lots of other really important details that you should be focusing on at least some amount, and that's where today's video was kind of going. So I hope you all enjoyed this thing on the internet. If you did, you can like the video and let me know. You can share if you really liked it, and you can subscribe with notifications turned on if you want to see videos like this every single day. Obviously, I have a seed series that you're probably going to appreciate. In fact, one of the seeds I showed off in today's video, um, you know, on the mushroom biome, I really like that. If you liked it too, let me know in the comments, and then maybe we'll do a seed video on it in the not-so-near future, because I thought it was just that good. And if you agree, you can let me know you want to see it. And if you disagree, you can say, nah, actually, having a mushroom biome next to a plains biome, next to a village, next to all those other things with that huge ravine near spawn, eh, I've seen better. Because if so, you know, beauty of seeds is uh, every single seed is perfect for someone, and you've just got to find your perfect seed. Minecraft is like marriage, you know? If you really think about it, you know, there's uh, something out there for everyone. Also, you shouldn't cheat. It's bad for you. You've got to survive, and that's why I recommend playing survival only in your marriages as well as your Minecraft worlds, and also not cheating, because it's bad for you, but it's also bad for the world. Anyway, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in another one, probably. Goodbye. I can see clearly now the rain has gone. Beautiful.